Susan Nelson. I've worked with the Dare County Department of Social Services for 30 years. My primary um, focus in the last six years has been foster home licensing and working with the foster families who take care of Dare County's foster children. My name is Susan Rice and my husband and I were foster parents for Dare County for 27 years. We're no longer active as foster parents anymore, but I now um, help with recruitment and training of new foster parents. Our county, unfortunately, has seen an influx of, of children into our foster care program. These children um, are needing placement with foster families. We currently have 18 licensed foster homes and all of our foster homes are full at this time. So we are actively recruiting new families who would be interested or able to join our foster parent program. We need a lot of different types of families so that we can match the children with families that they will do well with and the families will be committed to those children. Um, for some children, a single parent family may be better. For other children, they thrive in homes with a two parent family and other children. Uh, there is a need for all ages, uh, zero to 18, um, but I think folks should know that you're not going to have to take children of any age. You can preference the age or sibling sets or sex that you feel will uh, work best in your family. When you commit to a foster child, you're making a commitment to care for that child 24 hours a day. That child becomes a part of your family. But also, you are making a commitment to be part of a team that includes social service workers and birth families and other people in the community that may be involved with that case. And as part of that team, you are going to work very hard to help that child to uh, return to their birth family. It's a plan of re reunification. By reunification, we mean that the child is reunified with their birth family. They will return home, and that's the goal of this program. The goal of reunification is very important to um, for the family, the foster family, to understand because it can seem like an un fair or unreasonable expectation for a child to return to a family who has uh, many problems such as domestic violence, alcohol or drug abuse, or mental illness. Um, so I think that our training program helps foster families to understand why reunification is important and why reunification is possible. We, as an agency, work very diligently with the birth parents to help them correct the problems that cause the removal of the children. I also think it's important for prospective foster families to know that the children that come into their home uh, often have health problems, have behavior problems, have sleeping problems, are angry because they are not with their birth parents, despite the abuse or neglect they may have suffered in that home. It, it, that's why training is so important for our foster families. The training is not about uh, what, how you parent a child. It's how you parent and love and support these children that come into your home. So it is a total commitment on the family's part, the foster family's part, to be a part of the team. We are looking for people, persons, couples, uh, single people who um, have a flexibility, perhaps a sense of humor, and a willingness to learn about foster care, about um, dysfunction in families, about the children themselves, and how to make them feel more comfortable while they stay in your home as a foster child. The families need to be willing to be a part of a team, as Susan mentioned, to interact with the community providers. The child may be involved <clears throat> in mental health, may be uh, seen by a specialist for medical problems, and the foster parent's going to need to be able to be involved in that. The foster parents are going to need to be able to have a social 
support system for themselves because it can be exhausting at times, it can be uh, emotionally upsetting at times, and if you have a support system, then you can work through those emotions and feelings with them as well as talking with your agency social worker for the children. But that flexibility is probably the biggest thing that you can give to the foster parenting program. Foster parents are uh, given support, financial support for the children that come into their home. However, they must be able to show to the agency that they are already functioning on a financially stable, um, they are already financially stable. They um, will receive from the county a small payment at the end of each month that a child stays in their home. The child receives Medicaid, which will cover for all medical costs. The foster parents will be able to use local licensed daycare facilities and the Dare County Department of Social Services will pay for the child care for the children. If you're going to become a foster parent, I think you do have to have the flexibility that Susan spoke about because when a child comes into your house, it's a very sudden move. It isn't something you anticipate or plan for. There's a call and you have to be ready to answer and make a decision and then that child arrives. And so it's very chaotic when the child first arrives and you have to be able to roll with that chaos. There are a lot of things that have to be put into place, daycare, registration for school, um, obtaining clothing or meeting the child's needs if the child hasn't brought what they need with them. Um, usually there's a court hearing and uh, people will be contacting you as the foster parent to get some information about this. So the beginning is, is a very chaotic time and you have to be prepared for that. Um, then you go through a stage with the child of adjustment that is somewhat difficult, usually not always, there are exceptions, but we call that the grieving stages and that's something we talk about a lot in our training, how to work through these grieving stages with children. And that's a trying time for the foster parent. The children are very testy. Um, they're very, feeling extremely torn between their loyalties to their family and what's happening to them and the, the family you that they're now placed with. Um, and so that can be a difficult time to go through. Um, if you make it through that initial period of placement and that chaos and you make it through that adjustment period, things begin to settle down and the child begins to function as a part of your family. But that's the beginning is a difficult time and I think folks who come into this program need to know it isn't easy to become a foster parent, but it is very rewarding. When you see the child begin to change in your home and the child begin to function as a part of a family, it be, it's very rewarding because you're the ones that are offering that opportunity for that child to have a safe environment to live in and to watch that child be become safe and secure in that environment and begin to function and have a normal childhood is very rewarding. And I think, you know, the reward is, is that you're the one who's offered it to them. I think that's very true. I would certainly want to add to that because I think one of the most wonderful things that we see as the social worker is um, how the child does begin to settle into a routine. You see their physical changes in a lot of the children. Their skin, their complexion becomes more alive, pinker, browner, whatever their color tone may be, you see them fill out, you see muscle tone increase in little babies that have been neglected. You see a child smile, you see a child accepting affection from someone whereas before they turned away or didn't like to be held. Uh, those are the thing, little things that, that we see when we come into the home and we often point them out to the foster parent and they realize too that the child has changed because for them there's those the changes can be so subtle and so we try to really focus on that in in with the foster parents and in the program because it makes everyone feel better about what they're doing but particularly the foster parents to become a foster parent in Dare County, first of all, you have to be a Dare County resident. 
you um, have to be willing to have a, a fingerprint criminal record check. You have to have a uh, medicals for you and the members of your family. This would include a TB test for the parents. You, there is an environmental inspection where we would walk through your home with you to make sure that it was safe in terms of having screens in the windows, proper, um, you, that you have proper cooling techniques or heating in your home. Also that your dogs and cats have um, had rabies shots. You have to have what's called a fire inspection from the local fire marshal um, where he will be looking for things that have to do with fire hazards. Most importantly you have to have what, a home study done by the agency where we will in fact explore with you your youth, um, your growing up years, what made you into the person that you are today, your views on parenting, relationships, people with problems, and how you would deal with that if a child came into your home. In addition, you would need to go through a training program with the agency. I mentioned earlier that that training program is not about parenting. It is about working with and understanding the children who are placed in your home as well as understanding the birth families and their issues. You'll also learn about the court system, the guardian ad litem program, who will be making contact with you to see how the child is doing and how to work with the agency and the various community providers that are helping this family. We continue to need foster parents in Dare County. Uh, we have training sessions throughout the year and I think Susan Nelson's going to give some information on how to contact the agency and find out about those training sessions. This would be the first step in beginning uh, to become a foster parent. Exactly. I think you're right, Susan, is that we are always looking for foster families. There's always a need in our county. If you are hearing our program and you don't live in Dare County, please contact your local Department of Social Services in your county because there is a need across our state as well as in other states. We would ask that you your first point of contact would be calling our agency myself Susan Nelson at 252-475-5532 and we can begin the process what we like to do initially is to send you some information in the mail about the program as well as scheduling a visit to come to your home and talk with you in person about the program to see if you think that it is something you would like to make a commitment to.